Hello and welcome once again to Captain Goodspeed Maths. I'm Joe if you're new around here and today we have our final topic in the numerical methods of the OCR FSMQ course uh, on the new spec and today it's the trapezium rule which is something that used to be on core 2 uh, in the old A-level paper. I'm not entirely sure what it's on now if at all but the learning objective is to understand how to use the trapezium rule to estimate the area under a curve. So the trapezium rule is a method of estimating the area under a curve. We know that the area under a curve is given by integration, which we did uh, under definite integrals. Uh, so the trapezium rule gives a method of estimating these integrals. It's useful when we come across integrals that we don't know how to evaluate. The, trape uh, the trapezium rule works by splitting the area under the curve into a number of trapezia. Uh, of which we know the area. So do you remember how to work out the area of a trapezium? A terrible diagram there, I do apologise. Um, but area equals a half times uh, the sum of the parallel sides times how far apart they are. That's how I remember it. So uh, a half times h times a plus b. A half the sum of the parallel sides times how far apart they are. There you go. You'll be singing that to your heart's content in the exam. Hopefully it comes up. Uh, so here's a little diagram. Uh, so you can see there's the curve and we've split it into uh, loads of little strips there. So we're, we're, when the area shown in the diagram is divided into vertical strips, each little strip is approximately a trapezium. As you can see, you know, you've got, uh, you've got your two sort of sides. You've got a little uh, line joining them here and you've got the, the bottom bit there as well. And that works for every single one of them. So if the width of the strip and its two vertical sides are known, the area of the strip can be found using the formula. So half the sum of the parallel signs, sides times how far apart they are. The sum of, all, all, uh, sum of the areas of all the strips then gives uh, an approximate value for the, the area under the curve being considered. So, um, you know, if you've got this little trapezium here, this little trapezium here, etc. You add the, all, up all of those areas and then you've all... You, you've got yourself a, a little estimate of the whole area, if you get me. So there you go, there's that again. Uh, so the area is approximately equal to that, as we said before. So now suppose that there are n strips. So we've got y0, y1, y2, y3, y4, all the way up to yn. So there's n strips. All with the same height or width, h, and uh, that the vertical edges of the slip um, i.e. The, the, the ordinates, if you like, are labelled y0 to yn. So, so this strip here is y0. This strip here is y1. This strip here is y2. This strip here is y3. You get the idea. So there you go. An area of a little trapezium, so we've got two strips, we've got y0 and y1. We know those values, we know the heights of those, because they're the y-coordinates. The y-coordinates are here, that is the height of it. That is the height of it, that is the height of it, or the width, whatever you want to call it. So there you go. Uh, and the distance between them is going to be the distance between x1 and x2. So for the first trapezia, we add y0 and y1 uh, 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 and multiply the sum by h and divide by 2. More formally written as a half h times y0 plus y1. You might say, where do we get y0 and y1 from? Well, for the first trapezium, we add y0 and y1. I've just said that. Uh, we get y0 and y1 from the original function y0. Um from the original function. Y0 is just the y coordinate that corresponds with x0, and y1 is the y coordinate that corresponds with the with x1, which is what I was saying before. Uh, so you've got this little point here. So that goes across to a point y0. That goes across to a point y1, y2, all the way up to yn. So that is the point yn. So that's where we get our y's from. So uh, now the sum of the areas in all of the strips, so we've got a uh, half of y0 plus y1 times h, plus a half times y1 plus y2 times h, plus a half times y2 plus y3 times h, all the way up to yn minus 1 
uh, plus yn times a half times h. Because if you think about it, we do it for this area, 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 all the way up to this little area here. So then you take out a common factor of a half and h. So we take those out, and what we're left with is y0, y1, y1, y2, y2, y3, y3, all the way up to yn minus 1, yn minus 1, yn. So note that we counted twice uh, y1, y2, y3, all the way up to yn minus 1. We counted once y0 and y, uh, yn. So that is why the formula is this. So we get the area, or the approximate area, is a half times h. That's a common factor. Take that out at the front. y0 plus 2y1 plus 2y2 plus 2y3, all the way up to 2n, yn minus 1 plus, uh, plus yn. Sorry. So that is the formula you want to learn. All of the rest is just understanding of it. Or sort of where it comes from, if you like. So note, see how the first and last uh, ordinate is a single value, whereas all the others are doubled. Because we count them twice, you know, when you write it out explicitly like that, we've got two y1s, we've got two y2s, so that is why we double them. So let's try a simple example then. So the integral of x cubed between 1 and 5, we'd know how to do that. We add 1 to the power, divide by the new power, stick a 5 through it, stick a 1 through it, take them off each other. Bob's your uncle. But if that was a function that you had no idea how to integrate, you know, such as e to the e to the log x or something like that, then, or a to the x, you know, you don't know how to do that, this is a better method of doing it. So to find uh, the value of y0, we have to put the, the value for x0 into the given function. The given definite integral represents the area bounded by the x-axis, uh, the lines x equals 1 and x equals 5. So we've got the curve at y equals x cubed, that's up here. Uh, we've got, well, this, the, the, you know, this isn't the scale, but you get the idea. We've got our first value uh, at x equals 1 and our last value at x equals 3. So in between that, we have got uh sort of four strips if you think about it because we've got x naught we've got x1 we've got x2 we've got x3 we've got x4 we've got x5 but we don't have x5 because we only have one two three four five so we have five numbers but only four strips because it would only go to x4 because we start at naught one two three four so that is there and you can count there's one two three four strips so the five points uh, are where x equals one x equals two x equals three x equals four and x equals five so i find it uh, more useful to to compile a table to gather all of the results so we've got x uh our x values one two three four and five because you know we want to split this evenly so f of x equals x cubed, remember, or y equals x cubed. So therefore, uh, you put a 1 into that and you get 1 back. You put a 2 into that and you get 8. You put a 3 into that and you get 27. You put a 4 into that and you get 64. You put a 5 into that and you get 125. Um, remember that the coefficients of the, the formula are 1, 2, 2, 2, 1. You only count the the first and the last value once. You only count uh, you count the all the middle values twice. So that's what all that means. And then we times them together. So we times that column by that column, and we get one by one, which is one. Eight by two, which is sixteen. Twenty-seven by two, which is fifty-four. Sixty-four by two, which is one two eight. One two five by one, which is one two five. And then we add them all together. Remember, times them by a half, and times them by h. So the, the required area, uh, a, is given by a half h times the sum of all of uh, 1, 16, 54, 1, 2, 8, 1, 2, 5. So we get a half times 1, because remember, the, the height is 1. Uh, so we get area equals a half times 1 times 1 plus 1, 2, 5 plus 2 times 8 times 27 times 64 which is 162 
So the area, uh, the required area is approximately 162 square units. Use an integration, if we used our method before, I'd want the power divided by the new power, stick a 5 through, stick a 1 through it, take it off, you get 156. So it's a pretty decent estimate. And it's an overestimate, you know, and you can see that because if you join the first and last lines, that line comes over the curve. So we're, count we're getting this little bit of area as well that we didn't want. So that's why it's an overestimate. If it was an underestimate, um, we would see that the this line would go under. Uh, so, yeah, there you go. That is that. And that is um, that is the trapezium rule. It's, it's a little bit of a confusing one. Basically, you want to just uh, sort of learn the, the formula, do a few examples online, and uh, use use the formula basically it's it's not too hard once you you know what you do and use the table as well i find that table uh, very very useful uh this one here where you sort of have your x values you have your y values you have your coefficients your times y by the coefficient and you get one and you, or you, you get the rest uh, from there you sum them up and uh, then you half them and times them by the height but there you have it then. Uh, by the way, the, the height is 1 because we're going up in 1s every time. I don't think I, I actually said that in the video. But uh, the, the height is 1 because you're going up in 1s every time. We went from 1 to 2, 2 to 3, 3 to 4, uh, 4 to 5. So H is 1. So yeah, that is where we're going to leave it for today. Uh, if you found that helpful, then make sure you leave a like down below. Very happy that we've got out of the numerical methods part of the course. I really don't like numerical methods. Uh, and we're back on to stats to end the course. We've got, um, well, we've, we've got a bit of pure with the, the binomial expansions. Uh, but we also have uh, some permutations, combinations, and binomial distribution to finish off the course, which is all good stuff. So, subscribe for more FSMQ content, and of course, very best of luck with your exam.